what is free writing? Put simply, it's an exercise where someone, in this case me, offers a prompt, either a word or a phrase, even a concept. And from that prompt, you jump straight away into writing. The goal is to shift into a headspace where we don't question or interrogate ourselves. We let our imagination run free and whatever comes, comes straight out onto the page. So spelling mistakes don't matter. If you hit the wrong key on your laptop or if your handwriting turns into scribbles, that's totally fine. And it doesn't have to be a poem either. It can be a story or a short monologue. It can be in first person or third, anything at all. But the main challenge of the exercise and our biggest goal is as much as possible to keep writing. Don't stop. Your pen doesn't leave the paper, not to check your work or fix a mistake. Whatever you write, trust me, it will be there when you come back. The reason we do this is because when we create in lots of art forms, but especially writing, it's very easy to stop whatever momentum we have and look over our work prematurely. We often jump to judging ourselves and our choices before they've really had a, a chance to play out. And when we're writing about ourselves or using parts of our own story as inspiration, this can leave us in a pretty negative headspace. But by giving ourselves time to spill over and let our imagination flow onto the page, sometimes we can discover gems and insights we wouldn't have discovered otherwise. So before we begin, I'm actually gonna start with a short introduction, which I share with students of mine. This is a very introductory idea, but I think it's a useful one to consider and think about before we approach making something. It's called the three fields of knowledge. Everything we draw on when making a work, everything we know is taken from a combination of these three fields. None of them are more important or take priority over the others. It's purely a way of understanding where our information comes from. What are these three fields? Lived experience is our first-hand knowledge. Experiences we have gone through in the world, in the moment, and processed with our mind and our body. The key aspect about lived experience is that our bodies and the knowledge or experience in question came into contact at the same time. Whether our body has the chance to process that information fully or in part, we were there in the same shared space at the same time as the information we're now using to create. So that's the first field. Research, the second field, is the knowledge of others, which we have then witnessed. Now, I say witnessed here in very general terms to mean any information we have acquired externally from ourselves. So research includes our own active pursuit of knowledge through study or university, but it also includes social media, news on the TV, uh, when your friend tells you a story over lunch, that's research. And perhaps most important to note is that with research, there's a degree of separation between ourselves and the event. So information is relayed to us by a third party. And then lastly, imagination. Now we all have one, regardless of how often we're allowed to use it in our daily lives. Imagination refers to any information we've created internally in our own mind and body. Our imagination builds from what we learn firsthand by living it or researching it and transforms that information into something entirely new. And there are lots of reasons for this. We do this to process information, to understand people or places or new concepts, to take what interests us and expand it into something beautiful and creative and safe. Sometimes though, our imagination gets the better of us. Again, I wanna stress, not one of these three areas is more important than the other. And when we create anything, including art, we almost always use a combination or inspiration from all three. So why have I started with all this information with this long introduction? Well, when we think of poetry, we often take for granted that what we're drawing on the most is lived experience. And we are, that's true. But by framing our own information more specifically, we can start to acknowledge and question where our own ideas come from. In turn, this gives us more control over our own creative process. Earlier on, I mentioned that the purpose of free writing is to support us in moving away from a headspace of 
judging or criticizing our work. When we free write, our goal is to let imagination take the wheel and write without stopping to go back and fix mistakes. One of the challenges people face when they do this exercise is resisting that urge to stop. When something goes wrong, we have this visceral reaction that forces us to look back. Our instinct is to stop and correct it. Now, there's nothing inherently bad or wrong with this, and editing is a vital part of any creative process. However, when we critique work that comes from a space of lived experience, we also, in part, critique ourselves. And if we let imagination run wild, sometimes it can transform our lived experience into something scary or upsetting and far from the truth. And this isn't only true of creative practice either. We all know it's easy to let imagination run wild in the face of tricky or difficult moments, arguments with friends and family, life events which feel outside of our control. So the goal of this exercise is to separate the process of creation and the process of challenging or changing information. If we allow ourselves time to consider where information comes from, if we can acknowledge where it comes from, and that gives us greater agency in how we use that information, creatively or otherwise. So for the next 20 minutes or so, we're gonna try and give ourselves permission to put our critical brains to the side and focus purely on expressing our imaginative side. Before we start, I want to offer three guiding principles for the exercise. One, my imagination may show me whatever it wants to. I will write it down even if I don't understand it, even if my sentences are nonsensical or unusual, I will write. Whatever comes, I will not judge myself. For the next 15 minutes, my body may feel and think whatever it needs to. Two, if I don't think of anything, that's okay too. My body will offer me what it wants and whatever that may be, however much I write, it's perfectly acceptable. Three, editing can always come later. There will always be time to look at my work and focus on change, but for now, I give myself permission to create. To start off this exercise, we're going to create what's called a word bank together. So step one, I want you to think of a person that you hold a strong connection to. This can be a family member, a friend, a lover, a nemesis, an enemy, anyone at all. The only important thing is that you have an important and strong emotional connection to the person. And all we're going to do is spend the next five minutes writing down any and all words you can think of associated to this person. And I mean anything at all. It can be the color of their hair, their favorite meal, the last time you saw each other, the place that you met. The important thing is just that we write as much as possible single words, phrases, anything at all. But again, my challenge to you is don't let your pen leave the paper. Whether you get a whole page worth or even just three or four words, totally fine. We're just gonna spend the next five minutes brainstorming. If you found yourself stalling, then right now you can look on your screen to see a couple of prompts, just a few that we've offered you to skim through, to read, and hopefully let any of these phrases inspire you to keep going and continue. So pick up a pen and paper, and without further ado, begin.
Kia ora, me again. Welcome back from writing our work back. Again, I want to stress whether you wrote a lot of stuff down and you've filled pages or written not very much at all, kete pai. Either way, totally fine and totally useful. Whatever our minds and bodies want to offer us today, totally okay. Without further ado, let me introduce our word prompt for today's free writing exercise. I hope you know. Now, I want you to think of one thing that you wish you could say to this person, yeah? Whether you've seen them yesterday or five years ago, or whether you've not seen them in a long, long time. When you think about this person, what is the one thing that you hope in all of your body that they know? What is the one thing that you feel that you need to tell them? So again, over the next 15 minutes, if at any point you need any help or you find that your writing is stalling, uh, you can look on this screen to find additional prompts that we'll be chucking up at regular intervals. But other than that, I will let you go for 15 minutes. See you at the very end. And I hope you have a real productive, free flowing writing experience.
Kia ora. Sorry to interrupt, but just one final word from me. If you want to keep writing, if you feel like you're in the thick of a creative moment, then keep going. There is no need to stop until you want to. And vice versa, if you found that today you didn't write very much at all, or if the prompts didn't resonate with you, that's totally okay. We have very little control over how creative we feel at any one time. And if all you manage to write is your name at the top of the page, that's fine. Other than that though, I've been Dan Goodwin. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to this workshop. And I hope you have an inspiring time looking at some of the other digital sessions that we have available. Keep writing and bye for now.